Safer Cleaning and Disinfection During the COVID-19 Pandemic and Beyond. Hi, my name is Pally Ojea and I work at the San Francisco Department of the Environment. We're a city and county agency that provides solutions to advance climate protection and enhance quality of life for all San Franciscans. This presentation is about how to clean and disinfect safely during the COVID-19 pandemic and beyond. It is part of a series of trainings for child care providers. You can find more trainings like this at sfenvironment.org slash childcare. Today we'll talk about disinfectants in COVID-19, what are disinfectants, how I can find safer disinfectants and cleaning products, how I can clean and disinfect safely, and I'll provide some additional resources and a way for you to ask questions. So this image shows somebody spraying the streets with disinfectants back in the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is not necessary, nor is it effective. And in fact, it can be really harmful. In the early days of the pandemic, there was a lot of overuse and inappropriate use of disinfectants. Today, we're going to talk about the appropriate use of disinfectants and how to use them safely and effectively. We now know that person-to-person -person transmission is much, much more important than surface transmission, meaning it is very rare to pick up the COVID-19 virus by touching a contaminated surface and then touching your eyes, mouth, or nose. This is why the CDC, the California Department of Public Health, and the San Francisco Department of Public Health prioritize the prevention of person-to-person -person transmission via respiratory droplets. This text is from the San Francisco Department of Public Health Guidance for Child Care Providers, dated May 20th, 2021. It states that preventing person-to-person -person transmission via respiratory droplets is more important than cleaning and disinfection. Face masks, physical distancing, and good ventilation are more important to keep COVID-19 from spreading. Routine cleaning should continue, but additional disinfection to prevent COVID-19 is no longer recommended for programs for children and youth. Contaminated surfaces are not thought to be a significant route of transmission. I start with this because it's important that we weigh the risks versus the benefits of using disinfectants. That's because there can be problems that result from overusing disinfectants, especially the most common ones, like chlorine bleach and quaternary ammonium compounds, which can cause asthma. They can cause asthma attacks in people who already have asthma, and they can actually cause new cases of asthma in people who didn't have it before. We know that people with asthma are more susceptible to having a severe case of COVID-19. We want to make sure that while we are trying to protect people from COVID-19, we are not inadvertently causing other health problems that could cause people to be more susceptible to the virus. So what is a disinfectant? A disinfectant is a chemical that kills microorganisms. All disinfectants and sanitizers must be registered with the US Environmental Protection Agency or EPA. This gives us some assurance that the products actually do what they claim to do. The EPA also regulates the label that you see on the bottle. Usually these labels are very hard to read. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the EPA created a list called the end list of disinfectants which will work on SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. A lot of disinfectants will work against SARS-CoV-2 because the virus is relatively easy to kill. You don't need to read everything on this chart, but it shows you how certain bacteria, fungi, and viruses are harder to kill, such as tuberculosis or the viruses that call, cause norovirus, whereas others are easier to kill. And SARS-CoV-2 is easier to kill because it's a lipid enveloped virus. It is surrounded by fat and most disinfectants and even soap and water are very effective at killing something that is wrapped in a layer of fat.
The San Francisco Department of the Environment has been working on the topic of safer cleaning and disinfection for many years. And we have studied what disinfectants are considered safer. These ingredients are safer disinfecting ingredients. And so these are good ingredients to look for on a product label for a disinfectant. Citric acid, lactic acid, hydrogen peroxide, noanoic or caprylic acid. Thymol is a safer disinfectant, although it does have a strong smell and there is some evidence that it could be an asthmogen. So we recommend it only if the products above are not available. And alcohol wipes can be helpful for small surfaces like a keyboard or a cell phone, but they're not ideal for larger surfaces as flammability is an issue with alcohol. Our department created a tool to help people look for safer COVID approved products for their home or for their business. And what we did was we looked at the EPA N list and we pulled out all of the products that had safer ingredients like the ones that I just showed you. And so we put those products onto this web tool that you can look at to find products that are both approved for COVID and also have safer ingredients. You can see where to purchase them. You can see if they are wholesale or for home use. And you can also see how long the product should be on the surface, which is really important because these products need time to work. Another great resource is the San Francisco Department of Public Health Bleach Free Toolkit. You can find the toolkit at sfgov.org slash asthma slash childcare settings. And it's a wonderful resource to show childcare providers how to use safer disinfectants. So this is an example of one of, of the section on disinfection, which they recommend using Oxivir, which again is an EPA approved disinfectant. And it is also effective against COVID-19. Its active ingredient is hydrogen peroxide. And so it explains on what areas you should be using the disinfectant. It reminds you that you have to pre-clean before you use it. Uh, it tells you how long it needs to be on the surface and what needs to be done to remove it, which in this case is to wipe it dry. This slide shows the a similar section of the toolkit which talks about sanitization, which is something that is done on food contact surfaces in a child care. So what about cleaning products? Cleaning products are different than disinfectants because they are not registered with the EPA. They, although they can be effective against microorganisms, they're not regulated by the EPA. Oftentimes they will use words like natural or green to make you think that they're healthier, but there's no evidence to back up these claims. If you're looking to buy safer cleaning products, you want to look for products that have been verified by a third party. These labels that you will see on some cleaning products tell you that they have been verified, that another organization has looked at the chemicals to make sure that they really are safer. So the label on the left, the safer choice label, is something that you'll see more often on household cleaning products. So the types of products that you'll see at the grocery store. The green seal certified label is more often seen on industrial products. And the cradle to cradle and the UL Eco logo are less common, but you'll see them again more on commercial products than on residential products. So how to clean and disinfect safely. All of you are childcare providers, so you have a lot of experience with cleaning and disinfection, but these are just some tips to remind you how to keep the kids and how to keep yourself safe. So first of all, ideally you're gonna be cleaning and disinfecting when children are not in the space. And of course, you're gonna make sure that all the cleaning products and disinfecting products are kept out of reach of children. You wanna make sure that you're wearing personal protective equipment such as gloves and goggles. You wanna open windows where it's safe to do so. 
you want to clean first and then disinfect. And that's because germs stick to dirt and grease and grime. And if you don't get rid of that dirt and that grease and that grime, then the disinfection portion of your routine is not going to be effective. So you really need to do the cleaning first, get rid of the dirt, and then do the disinfection. Dilute products according to the directions. So many products require that you add water, for example. Um, also, we don't recommend that you mix products because you never know how the ingredients in one product are going to react with the ingredients in another product. And you never want to mix bleach and ammonia as it can create a toxic gas that can be deadly. Apply with a cloth if you can. That way, the product is not released as not as much product is released into the air and you can avoid any splashing back from the surface. If you have to spray directly, try to stand far away from the surface that you are spraying. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really important to leave the product on the surface for the time indicated on the label. Disinfecting products need time to do their job. They are not just spray and wipe. Some might just need a minute, some might need three minutes, some might need 10 minutes. So it's really important to read the directions and leave them on, on the surface for the time necessary. For more information, here are a couple of websites. sfapproved.org is the website I mentioned earlier where you can find the Department of the Environment's resource for looking for COVID-19 products that are safer. I also mentioned the sfgov.org asthma site where you can find the bleach free toolkit. sfgov.org slash resource COVID childcare is where you can find guidance on COVID-19 for childcare providers. And the last website is a UCSF website that has green cleaning and disinfection resources. This website, sfenvironment.org slash childcare, has other videos like this about how to reduce exposure to toxic chemicals in the childcare setting. And I want to thank you for listening today. I also want to thank Healthy Babies, Bright Futures, and the Mayor's Innovation Project for supporting this work. Finally, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at 415-355-5005, or you can email me at paoli.ohea at sfgov.org. Thanks so much.